guys, it's Ariel here from Fix My Box, and today we are going to be joined by a very special guest, my husband Jason. Good day. So my husband is actually part of the company. He co-founded the company with me and he does a lot of the behind the scenes sort of thing with Fix My Book. So a lot of the video topics, he's actually the one who says, you should do a video on this, you should do a video on that. So there's a lot of his input in the YouTube channel and just in the business in general that you guys don't really see or like hear much about but I thought it would be great to bring him today and we can do this video together since Jace has been running companies for way longer than me so Jace maybe you can just share a bit of your background in terms of business uh, so they kind of know that we know what we're talking about okay so um, about 10 years ago, I was, or 15 years ago now, I was working uh, for a bank in small business and uh, com commercial lending. And then in, oh, I think it was about 10 years ago or something, uh, 12 years ago, I moved into working as a manager in international licensing. And then eventually uh, we changed countries a couple of times and eventually we moved to Canada and I started my own business and I've also helped start this business and yeah we've been going on since then and it's been a journey and a lot of sleepless nights yeah so we just wanted to share this with you guys because we see especially with a lot of our newer you know newer meaning like they are just starting out in terms of their business journey those type of clients are really confused as to what to expect um with running a business so i wasn't completely clueless when i started my business because jace was there you know to hold my hand through everything again he co-founded the business with me so i had more of an idea but definitely a lot of you know, new things with starting a business. So hopefully this video helps someone out there just find their footing in terms of like the business expenses they should expect. And yep, we'll get started. Okay, so obviously there are going to be one-time costs and recurring costs in your business. So one-time costs, obviously it's in the name, you're only gonna pay for these one time so these are number one obviously registering your business so whether it's a sole proprietorship or a corporation there will be a one-time cost to register your business i think the the one we went with was owner ownr.co and i will link it down below i've said this again and again it, i'm not I'm not like sponsored by them or anything, but I used them when I started my business and Jason also used them when he started his business. Yeah, it's a very good company. It, yeah. um, it allows you to register a business or a very simple business and get your legal uh, legal documents set up. So in the next point, articles of incorporation, shareholder agreements, um, all of that set up within under a thousand dollars so if you were to go to a lawyer to do this you'd be looking at uh, three grand yeah between a thousand dollars to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars quite easily but you also have to remember that this is set up or owner sorry is set up for a very simple corporation so it would be usually just a one person corporation that you're setting up or like you know a corporation owned by like a married couple like us right where it's yeah. very easy like the structure is just like 50 50 and then that's it so if you are going to start a business with you know not your spouse you know like friends family etc we would really encourage you to think about your shareholder agreements and how things are structured because you want to make sure that you're protected um, and that everything is clear, right? Yeah, I've seen a lot of businesses in my life where friends have got into business together and within the space of a couple of months, a lot of things go pear-shaped and yeah. they one of them wants out or all of them want out mm -hmm. and they want the money in the company and it, it all becomes a very big drama. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is set things up at the beginning uh, correctly and yes, it will cost you money. And the, these sort of things that we're talking about in these one-time startup costs, 
you just have to eat these. I mean, it's just simply, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this again and again, it's the cost of doing business and you just have to accept that if things don't work out, that's your sunk cost. It's gone. You're not getting your money back. Mm So the way you should also think about this in like layman's terms is your shareholder agreement is kind of like a prenup. So you're defining things. Should there be like an event of a divorce, right? You have a prenup. Same concept with a corporation. Should we want to dissolve the corporation, you have the shareholder agreements, you know, lining out everything. Who's going to get the kids, etc.? That's kind of what a shareholder agreement is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need to be much more complex than that to get into. I mean, we could speak for hours on it, but there's not really much point. You'd, you'd be mm. bored. Uh, the third one is licenses and permits. So this will depend on, you know, what country you're in, what uh, state or province you're in, what, what type of city business? you're in, what type of business, correct? Mm. Um, a lot of different factors go into this. So we can't advise you on this, obviously. You you need to go research this yourself. Um, and also, you should ask your accountant or lawyer uh, w- what these would entail for your specific business idea. Mm-hmm. And this is um, not just like, uh, let's say for like a license, it's not just like, oh, I have like a permit, you know, for my business. It's not just that. It's like, do you have a f- permit? Let's say if you're an electrical company, not only does your business have to have a permit, you as like an electrician need to have some sort of license as well. So it's not just the business permit. It's you also your licensing with yourself. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that as well, you know, some states and some provinces may require you to have a specific type of insurance in order mm. to practice and to be able to get your license and permit, you need to show that you're insured already. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that too. Yep. Okay. So number four, computer hardware and initial inventory, business cards, et cetera. So these are like kind of the uh, more fun stuff in terms of like one-time software costs. The, the only reason we put this in one-time costs is because the computer hardware, you're going to you know, purchase that probably once at the beginning and you're not going to purchase anything again for five years. So just think about it as a one-time cost. Mm -hmm. Um, Initial inventory, this is the idea that you're, you know, you're going to start up a business with some, you know, product that you're going to sell. And initially you're going to come off and have to purchase that. And if it doesn't work out, you know, it's a one-time cost for you. Yeah. And also like, you know, business cards, et cetera, things like that. No one here is purchasing business cards monthly, right? So this is usually like a one-time cost when you set up your company. It's nice to see your company logo and your name in the business card. I mean, I still have a bunch of business cards when I started my business. And like no one, no one gives it out now because well, everyone's everyone's online. The funny thing is, we started the businesses during COVID, so the irony was you couldn't even give out business cards anyway. So we bought bought all these business cards, and they're just they're sitting there. Yeah. Oh, hey, so that's it. I mean, this this list is not exhaustive, but just so you have an idea, like you're aware these are most of the things that you're gonna need. Yeah. So. Just in general, you're going to be looking at spending probably anywhere between, you know, a thousand dollars here to plus plus plus. I mean, it ranges. It could be massive depending on your inventory costs or your your computer initial computer hardware costs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just in terms of the the first three, you're thinking probably between a thousand to three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Yeah. And obviously the computer will depend what kind of computer you're going to buy. But yeah, if you're if we're purchasing initial inventory for, let's say, an e-commerce company and you're buying, let's say, 15 grand to 20 grand of inventory initially in the beginning, then you can see how these costs can add up very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next. So again, there are one-time costs and there are recurring costs um, in terms of a business. And these are just things that people should be aware of that this is actually the cost of doing business. You know, a lot of people, they look at, they look at the business and they think, oh, it's all, you know, money, 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 like generating money. But a lot of business is also expenses, right? So like know that this comes with every you know revenue that you generate like comes with expenses and these are those expenses 
So one of the things that you always hear from people online that want to sell you the idea of creating a business or buying a course from them about starting a business is they're always going to talk about your top line revenue. They're always going to talk about the big numbers like, oh, oh I made a, a million dollars. Well, did you really make a million dollars? No, usually um, that million dollars was eaten up and it's eaten up by these things, the recurring costs. Yeah, they like to talk about sales. They don't like to talk about profit and that's a video for a different time we're going to make that because i think a lot of people get confused with the difference between sales and profit and sales doesn't really matter it's the profit that matters at the end of the day Yeah, that's what you're paying tax on okay so recurring costs very basic website domain online presence so online presence will include like social media as well yeah so your websites and your domain you know, your domain expect to pay a couple of hundred dollars a month for that, or a couple hundred dollars a year, sorry, to several thousand dollars, depending on how popular that domain is. Um, other website costs, just general hosting, hosting yeah. you know, $50, $100 a month. So you're already looking at probably $1,700 minimum mm -hmm. as a recurring cost for the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the next advertising and marketing, sky's the limit with this we've seen ad spends of like ten thousand dollars a day like really crazy for larger businesses but you know in the beginning i would say most of what we've seen with people it's probably a couple hundred dollars a month in in ads is what they spend yeah so this is a what's called a variable cost so this would fluctuate on the basis of you know how much product you're actually selling so obviously you would be spending more and more advertising and marketing budget depending on you know how much uh, product you're moving and then how mm -hmm. much revenue you're generating. Yep, and this could also be seasonal. So for example, like tax season, obviously most accountants, they'll advertise during tax season, so like January to April, and then the rest of the year, they're not so you know heavy on advertising. So it also fluctuates seasonally. Yeah, and then as another good example, You've got a, say, for example, a Shopify store. A lot of your advertising would be around the November and December Somewhere. period mm. when you've got the Black Friday sales Christmas. and the Christmas sales mm. too. Around the holidays mostly. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it for advertising and marketing. Like, we don't, like, personally in our company, we don't have any ad spend in terms of, like, you know, Facebook, Google ads, things like that. Um, most of what we do is really content um, generation. Yeah, so a lot of what we do is just very targeted content to mm -hmm. bring people to our website via videos like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's simply done just by, you know, doing SEO research and trying to find and pick up trends on the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's it for advertising. Next would be, oh, this is the fun stuff. So this is, I personally... Fun, fun, for, <laughs> fun for me. I personally, I like all of these. So I like, I like software, I like doing the research. So for me, this is fun. So number three would be the practice management. So if, if you're not familiar with that, it's just basically the software you use to run your company. This could be anything from a very specialized software like us, for example. Like um, there are things targeted for the accounting um, industry like Tax Dome, Financial Sense, stuff like that. Those are practice management softwares. But it could also be a more general software like, you know, Monday.com. Or HubSpot or is Hubs another one. Uh, yeah, things yeah, like and, that. And then, you know, booking softwares like Calendly. Um, but there's a, yeah, scheduling and there, stuff there's like that. a huge range of software available. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that we see a lot, especially in service-based businesses. So they go, crazy. they go crazy on the software. I mean, we do too. It's but you know, a lot of the software we, oh, we're probably saying the same thing. We need it. Yeah. Um, we but need. Yeah, yeah. You, you will spend quite a bit of money on software and this is a recurring cost mm -hmm. that's going to be several hundred dollars a month depending on how mm -hmm. complex your needs are. So if you were to create something very, very basic. Um, if you're doing everything through email, like you just need a G Suite. Like yeah, you just it. need a G Suite. But things can get out of hand very quickly with that once you have mm -hmm. multiple clients. That's why Shopify is quite good because they have, they kind of build sort of a, 
a customer list for you mm-hmm. um, using the, the the way that they track data. Mm-hmm. But again, this this would depend on the type of service you offer as well, right? So it it also is dependent on your company. So if you are, let's say, if you're marketing your services as part, like one of the tenants of your service is like a word, the convenience kind of thing where where it's convenient to work with you, right? So you're not just on email. You could have a client portal. You could have even a dedicated mobile app things like that so it just depends on how you market your business and how you need to support that type of marketing so your software needs to support that so again this could be anything from a couple hundred dollars a month to a couple of like 10 20 30 thousand dollars depending on how large your operation is the cost gets up there very quickly Mm. and it really depends on either two two major variables the first variable is how many people are going to be using the software in terms of clients so mm. i mean that that could obviously expound expound quite quickly and then you've got the variable of how many internal users you've got in your own company so mm. you know if you've got a small company but a large range of customers it's it's probably good to pick software where you're being uh, charged on the basis of how many internal users you have and mm. not you know external customers yeah so Again, it would depend on your business, but just be aware this is like a recurring cost that you will have to pay each month. Okay, next. So this is obviously (laughs) where we're at. So insurance, accounting, and bank fees. I think the reason why we're actually putting this in recurring costs is people have this impression or maybe new business owners have this impression where accounting is like a once a year type of thing that you need to do a a lot of it's coming from the fact that you know they've been employees before and they've been filing their taxes with turbo tax for 200 dollars once a year and they think that their accounting cost should only be 200 dollars another thing that we see that's quite common in this industry is the fact that people are so objection objectionable to bank fees Mm -hmm. now banks allow you to transact very very easily and are a very secure source to place your funds now when it comes to bank fees i always just tell business owners this is simply the cost of doing business just eat it doesn't matter what they are unless you're being silly Mm -hmm. and opening you know ten thousand accounts and getting charged ten dollars a month for each account i mean there's no point in that and there's obviously like a trade-off this is what we see all the time with business owners and we want them to face the reality of the situation you want to get paid faster then open up credit card payments but the credit card payments come with higher bank fees you want to get paid slower sure do everything via e-transfer via checks you're not going to have that much bank fees but your cash flow will suffer and i 100 percent guarantee you if you allow credit card payments you will get paid faster every single client who has turned on credit card payments has never complained about the bank fees after that because they're too busy being paid quickly yeah that that's another important point um As well, when it comes to your accounting fees, the way that you bank also affects your accounting fees. So if Mm -hmm. you're opening multiple numbers of accounts, you're doing random silly transactions which are erroneous, um, which compounds the work that, you know, people like us need to do. And what's another one? Um, Yeah, if you're... if you're Multi-currency. Yeah, if you're adding complexity to your banking, Mm -hmm. so multi-currency... Uh, PayPal, Stripe, these third-party payment processes. If you have so many processes. payment processes. Yeah, payment yeah. processes. You're, you're essentially mm-hmm. compounding your accounting costs too. Um, and on that, just the last point in mm-hmm. insurance. Now, this is going to range depending on what type of business you're in. But, and there are different types yeah, of insurance. Yeah, there are many, many different types. So from services to simply selling products, you know, you've got protection uh liability protection insurance you have like uh errors and emissions insurance like yeah. professional insurance there's general liability insurance you know if someone like trips and falls in your storefront something like that like you need insurance for that as well yeah this is this is going to be very very heavily dependent on what industry you're in mm-hmm. so just take as a as a note your insurance costs are going to be minimum one thousand dollars a year very the base would be a thousand dollars a year um, so on this as well, we'll just cover it quickly. 
websites and domain online presence, you're probably paying $1,500 a year for that advertising marketing. That's going to go Sky's up the limit. exponentially depending on how much you sell, but several hundred dollars a month base, mm -hmm. uh, practice management software as well, probably a hundred dollars a month base, um, and insurance a thousand dollars a year. So you're looking at possibly somewhere between 400 to 500 dollars minimum a month there so six grand a year minimum yeah six grand a year minimum and we haven't even covered the accounting fees yet which is on the next slide okay so we wanted to do this so that you guys have an idea of like how much accounting actually costs so you may look at this and think oh my god this is so expensive or oh my god this is so cheap right like this is not what i get charged like i got charged way more than this it's like yes this is a base range base meaning like this is like the bare minimum of what you should be expecting to pay and by bare minimum what we're really saying as well is you know it's a single owner company very one bank standard account, amount one bank transactions account. standard amount of accounts you know, one bank account one credit card probably a loan um, annual HST filing, not quarterly, possibly very basic one month, uh, one time a month payroll. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, your annual filing fees. Um, and this is another thing at the very bottom, a lot of people forget corporate minute books. So that needs to be done annually as well. Yeah. So we hope that this gives you more of an idea of what the price range is really to get a bookkeeper in Canada. If you want to outsource abroad, try to freelance, sure, it could be less than this. What, what we're giving you right now is what you would pay a bookkeeper, a decent bookkeeper in Canada who has some idea of what they're doing. Yeah, a decent bookkeeper and decent accountant. Mm. And there's something else you need to know here. So when it comes to the filings at the bottom, if you outsource to a person overseas that is not a Canadian resident nor a citizen and they don't have a corporation in Canada, these people won't be able to file anything for you. So they'll take your money and they'll, they'll, they can do the bookkeeping possibly, but they probably won't be able to file anything and their expertise in sales tax uh, may be lacking which is something we want to highlight because when it comes to sales tax, Canada actually has the most complicated sales tax system in the world. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but we have the most complicated sales tax. So a lot of people are unfamiliar with it. We're not some basic, you know, country like the UK where they have like a flat VAT or like Australia where they have um, GST. flat GST, right? Our GST changes per province. Things can get claimed back. Things do not get claimed back like BSD. So it's way more complicated than what people think it is. Yeah. So on this, just note that, you know, if you're looking at this and thinking, wow, $6,000 is expensive for, you know, just running a sole prof or six and a half grand for a corp, you know, I can't afford that. Then maybe you should be thinking, you know, rethinking whether or not your business idea is going to be a decent one yeah because if your business idea can't even make enough profit to pay these overhead costs you you should not even start there's no point you're not going to make enough money to have a decent profit and another thing we want to touch on and it will be in a different video um is should you incorporate or not a lot of people you know want to incorporate thinking oh i'm gonna save money because corporations pay less taxes not necessarily if you keep pulling all the money out of your corp anyways there's no tax savings in there but yeah. we can tackle that some other time we just want you guys to be aware this is the cost so you may think as well okay let's say six thousand four hundred in the corp for the um low range if you want to incorporate you have to leave enough money in your business to have this worth it as tax uh, as um thing as something that you have to pay for your corporation, right? So the tax savings of your corporation should be more than this. Yeah, think about it like bank fees. It's simply just the cost of doing business. Now, this is, upsets a lot of people. I don't know why. Um, right, because when we get to the end, probably you're going to find out running a business may not pay for you. 
because uh, we're going to explain the stuff that a lot of the influencers don't really like to talk about. And, you know, you may think we're doom and gloom or something like that, but we're not. We're just telling you the reality of the situation because we get so many calls from, oh, it's heartbreaking sometimes, like from these new business owners that got suckered in by, you know, uh, you know, follow my course and you'll have $10,000 a month on Shopify and this old lady. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. But um, we're, we're making this because we see this quite a lot now where people are buying into courses telling them that they'll you know they'll earn a hundred thousand dollars a year from shopify so what they mean by that is you'll make a hundred thousand dollars in sales they're not talking about any of the expenses you need to pay for that they're not talking about how you've probably paid 35 percent of that in inventory costs <laughs> you know they're and they're not talking about any of the expenses they're just talking about top line revenue yeah and we're just giving you what the expenses of running a business are actually going to be so that you can work out whether or not this idea that you may be going into or maybe thinking about will be able to meet some of these costs which are just simply if the cost even, of doing yeah, business if it's even feasible you're right so there you go okay so we put this last because not everyone will have these expenses um, so obviously rent and utilities, if you are not, not, you don't have a physical storefront, you won't have this payroll and subcontractors. So in the very beginning, a lot of people, they're the only people in their company, so they don't take any payroll. So this usually comes later down the line. And we want to emphasize taxes. Taxes is a recurring cost, okay? It's the cost of doing business. You got to pay taxes. Yeah, that's why it's there twice. Yeah. <laughs> because you, if you are selling in Canada to uh, Canadian citizens, Canadian residents, you know, you will be paying sales tax. Um, you will be paying income tax if you're making a profit. And any payroll you will be paying yourself, you will be paying, or, you know, uh, uh, employee. an employee, you'll be paying payroll tax on. So... There are a number of taxes that you need to pay that you need to keep on top of and their mm -hmm. filing schedules are all different. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's how people like us help. You know, yeah. we, we help keep people on top of this as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Hey, next. Incidental costs. So these are not recurring costs, okay? They're not one-time costs, but they're like minor expenses in business. And we emphasize the word minor okay because some the, these these expense categories are so used and abused by so many business owners and it's no surprise these are also the most audited um, expense line categories in a corporate tax return because the cra does know that the business owners like to i wouldn't say bad these expenses but have a lot of these expenses that may be unnecessary yeah so no putting in your golf games or you know your your health memberships or you know your gym memberships That's, your dinner with your sister is not a yeah, business you're, you're, expense you're offside all right if you usually if you have to ask you're probably offside you know you'll know what these incidental costs will be you know for example if you were having a company-wide where everyone in the company is invited and you're having a big annual dinner that's obviously a a expense for your business but if you're just going out to the pub to buy some food you, you know because with some you, of your employees or, no not even some of your employees just by yourself yeah. having a lunch break that yeah. is not a business expense um that's you just buying lunch yeah okay we won't tackle this too much but just be aware these are very very highly audited by the cra so be very careful with these yeah, expense accounts especially vehicle you don't you don't want to be thinking about oh i'm gonna have this you know very expensive vehicle in the company or anything like that because i mean the vehicle costs are capped as well so you yeah. you're just being a bit silly when you think that no minute uh, no logbook no vehicle expenses yeah. period you have to if it's if it's not a purely company car like your you know this is like your personal vehicle and you're saying you're using it for business purposes you better have a mileage yeah. log so the one that we always recommend for this um My is mile iq 
and we'll list that down below as well yeah we don't get any benefit from them they just have a great platform and every canadian that has a vehicle that they're claiming should be using this and just so you guys are aware, the reason why we say you should have a mileage log is because the mileage log is the first thing that the CRA asks for. If you can't produce that, everything else is downhill from that point on. And when it comes to these things as well, when you're claiming incidentals, um, you know, there's no point claiming something that you think is a bit spurious because you're essentially throwing away your credibility in front of the CRA and the cr the credibility you have with yourself. You know, there's no mm -hmm. point arguing over a $50 meal, meal expense when you know it's a bit offside. Mm -hmm. um, you, you may as well just only focus on the actual business expenses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let Jace tackle this area more because he would be more familiar with this uh, since he's been in business longer and I'll just maybe jump in every now and again. But Jace, here you go. Uh, so cost of doing business. Now, this is a mindset that you really need to get your head wrapped around because too many people go into business where they think they want all the revenue, but they don't have to pay any costs. Um, just stop that straight away. So if you're paying someone for services that you actually need that you do not know how to provide to yourself, that is a cost of doing business. Uh, you just have to eat it. Mm -hmm. If it's $1,000, if it's $5,000, if it's $20,000, that's this is, just it. This especially I would like to emphasize with anything related to the government. So for example, if you are processing your, you want to bring, let's say, uh, an employee from abroad to Canada, you're not going to apply for the visa yourself. You're going to get some some immigration lawyer to apply for the visa for you and process things correctly. Same concept with accounting. You do not want to be submitting things in like with the government that could be wrong. Yeah. So when it comes to these things as well, you also have to wrap your head around the fact that if you don't know it, you probably should just call someone who does. Um, don't try to mess around with it because it, one little mistake can end up being years of headache for people. And we've seen this before. So just pay someone who knows what they're doing. Obviously that would be the first start, but don't, don't go arguing all the time about the cost because, you know, if you want, if you want to pay for, if you want the service of, or the luxury of having a Ferrari, you're not going to expect the price of a Toyota. I mean, that, that's what Ariel's dad always used to say to me. So if if you want the best in the business, that's going to be the best lawyer or the best accountant or the best you know immigration mm. consultant or whatever, if you ask them, the first thing out of your mouth you ask them is about price, probably, you know, you, you're, you're barking up the wrong, uh, barking up the wrong tree with that. Yeah, I think it was put really well by one of our mentors actually in accounting. And he said that um, a very good example for the cost of doing business would be like O.J. Simpson going to trial. Like, yes, he could have had a public defender, right? But do you think he would got who he would have gotten off the hook with a public defender or do you think it took the dream team of lawyers to get him off the hook? So that's kind of the way you have to think about things as well with this. Yeah. And so on to the next point, because I talk about a lot about costs above, um, but on number two, risk and reward. You need to understand that everything that you do in business is going to have a price associated with it. And there may be a potential upside for that and also the potential downside. So you will not recognize any sort of gain. So for example, if you're going to go into business and spend, you know, 15, 20, 30, $40,000 on initiating a business, you just have to bear in mind that you may have absolutely no reward and no upside for that. That's just sunk, that's gone, and you have to live with it. Um, on the alternative side of that coin when you're an employee you know your 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 income and your upside is limited you know you're you're basically going to be earning what you were earning last year plus or minus any adjustment for inflation now 
your reward with business can be enormous. You know, you can put in ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, but your upside is essentially unlimited. You know, you're 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 buying a call option on yourself and your own abilities. Now, what we do see a lot of in Canada is number three, which is taking the loss, like as in the refusal to take the loss. So just as a very basic example, I, you know, just browsing Facebook marketplace for gym equipment, I see people trying to sell secondhand gym equipment at the retail price because they don't want to book a loss on the retail, uh, on the gym, gym equipment. I see the same thing, you know, I was researching, I think used cars or ski doos or whatever it was, and people are trying to sell it at the same price they bought it for. Now, you're not going to sell it. You know, you just need to understand that sometimes you've put money into something and you made the wrong call. And now you need to get out of that trade and you need to simply take the loss. Now, I heard a good analogy the other day where someone had said that if you've done something wrong, or if you, when you get on the wrong yeah when train. you when you get on the wrong train the best thing to do is just get off at the first stop not keep riding it all the way to the end of the line and thinking you're going to you know make it back to the beginning that's a gambler's mentality yeah that's that's a gambler's mentality so yeah. when you do make a wrong call you know simply own up to it face it and bear the embarrassment and then just take the loss it's very very simple i mean i've taken a lot of losses in my life mm -hmm. so just just own it because yeah, once you own it there, there's no embarrassment with it because if people just mention it to you go yeah that happened so what what have you done yeah. so with number four so sleepless nights no time off there's a lot of stress and this is also the road less traveled so the reason why i want to emphasize this is because we get calls all the time from people saying i saw this thing online saying i can make ten thousand dollars a month with a shopify store and that's all i want i want a stress-free life and i only have to work and, four and hours a week. week and i was just like thinking first of all they lied to you second of all that's not if, if you want a stress-free life don't do business be an employee because having a business is very yeah. very very stressful it's, very it's the most stressful thing you'll probably ever do in your life do uh, you think elon musk is not stressed yeah. <laughs> like seriously honestly we we see hundreds of business owners on a regular basis they right? regularly do work on sundays yeah. they email us on sundays we're, we're recording yeah. this on a sunday morning yeah you know i, I you know what time I got up today? And it's Sunday. I got up at 3.30 a.m. And I yeah. get up at 3.30 a.m. every day. Errol gets up at 4 a.m. every single day. We work probably between, yeah, something like 70 to 80 hours a week. Yep. Each. Yeah. Not together, not jointly. Each. Yep. And that is just our life. Yep. Yeah, and now our dog is barking because we need to go and, and take care of him yeah. and go for a walk. And, you know, you're taking care of that. You're taking care of family. You're taking care of people's, uh, your, your social life with other people. So what I want to touch on with number four is a lot of people are not going to understand what it is that you're doing when you start a business. And it's because they will clock off at 4.30 or 5 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. And, and have their weekend. And they will have their weekend and you will still be working. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot wrap your head around that, and if you are not the kind of person where you can tell them, ah, sorry, I got something to do today. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. I have to do that. I have to answer this email. If you have FOMO, like fear of missing out, and you still you know, want to be with all your friends, this is probably not for you because running a business is hard work, dedication, and sacrifice and I emphasize the word sacrifice because it takes a long time to see any reward if at all yeah. when you start a business most of the time you actually statistically speaking you will lose yeah. um, and the sad thing about this is you know you you have a lot of friends that will not understand why you're having to decline every single offer that they make you and you'll probably lose those friends along the way we know we have and it's it's mm -hmm. it was nothing against them 
It's just simply this is we the had to of do our this. Life, yeah. yeah, we had to do this work. Yeah, you know, yeah, other other people required our time, and it's not because they were paying us, but it's because they have deadline, government deadlines that we can't avoid. Yeah. So I hope this video was helpful. Again, we're gonna um, cover all the other topics in the next video, and this video is long enough. <laughs> it's 40 minutes long, and we gotta go quickly because our puppy is crying, and we will introduce the puppy to you guys soon, so stay in tune for that. Yeah, pleasure. Hey guys, it's Ariel here from Fix My Books. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and helping my YouTube channel grow. If there are any videos you want to see on my channel, please don't hesitate to comment them down below. I always listen to your feedback. And once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books, helping you fix your books.